Hi, welcome to Acapella, a Caring People podcast. We have a great show today. I want to introduce Priscilla Roman. She's an RN with Great Care. And then also Angela Thomas, who's also an RN with Caring with Grace. My awesome co-host, Brian Levy with Manchester Living. And we are talking today about patient advocacy, hiring a professional professional advocate or geriatric care manager. And what better guests than talking with two that are top in the field? So excited to have you both here today. Give um, give a little elevator speech. Tell us who you are, what you do, and with some differentiating factors. Go ahead. All right. Well, um, I am a registered nurse, as is Priscilla. I have additional certifications in um, uh, certified care management. I've been a member of the Aging Life Care Association, which is a national organization of about 1,800 people around the country. In order to become a care manager and to be certified, people usually come from nursing backgrounds, social work backgrounds, gerontology, other healthcare professionals, even physical therapists, speech therapists. And some people come from even business backgrounds and uh, do additional training to get the certification as a care manager. So um, I've started my company 14 years ago. We have seven team members that do care management and uh, that's, that's who I am. Great, Priscilla? Um, so my name is Priscilla Romans and I am a registered nurse. I recently r- launched my um, business in March of this year. Yes, at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, my heart for nursing um, comes with lots of different experiences and I really felt Um, burdened by all of these people out there that are lost with the healthcare system. Um, Many people know that healthcare sucks. And, you know, we want to make sure that patients are getting what they want out of the healthcare system for them. So we take care of patients, pediatrics, um, millennials, we have lots of millennial clients, um, adulthood, caregiver stress, And of course, um, with the aging, a similar structure to Angela, but she has an amazing um, business, um, many more years than me. So um, healthcare sucks, so we just wanna make it better for everybody. There is is something that that you need that is a barrier to your health moving forward, and we know that there's a solution, and we wanna be that advocate for you. And although y'all are similar in your businesses, there are some differentiating factors. How are you compensated, and how are you compensated? Angela. Yeah. So we, uh, most of our compensation is private pay. And occasionally a long-term care policy will cover our services for a family uh, and an an aging adult. Um, We also take care of disabled adults. Um, So the little difference is Priscilla will advocate for the whole continuum of life. Ours uh, usually begins when uh, a person is an adult. So one type of case that we often have is an older parent with a disabled adult child, and they're coming to the place where they have to find placement or a solution or next steps for both of them. So anyway, yeah. that's one thing. Yeah. Um, so we get paid direct from the client, and um, we can do it in multiple steps. Usually we start with an initial consultation where it's literally a flat fee of 75 bucks, we give them a game plan and based off of what their root, their root issue is, get to the bottom of it, give them those steps. And if they need help with those steps, such as calling the insurance company with them on the phone, walking into the doctor's visit with them, we believe to be along the side of the patient to help drive their health care forward because there's, some, there's things that a nurse with my background, we know what to say sometimes to the doctors. We know sometimes how to move around the healthcare system a lot more efficiency because there's a lot of delay in care that people have, right? We need to stop that. We can do something about that. And um, we've seen so many great results um, even during this pandemic and people aren't as fearful because they know they have an advocate that can help kind of ease that stress, give them a game plan and be that support. And you are private pay hourly, correct? Yeah, well, I'm private pay. We do per consultation. Sometimes we follow clients monthly, depends on how chronic their need is. Um, we do a lot of research for people as well, taking off that extra layer of research. So we do get paid hourly for those things as well. 
Um, it's all on the website um, in terms of what our services are. We're very transparent. We have it all laid out there as to what you're going to get with Grave Care. Got it. And, you know, one thing, you know, there's the expression, step over a dollar to save a nickel. And I know so many people think, well, if insurance isn't going to pay for this, or mm -hmm. is Medicare going to pay for this? But there's so many unnecessary things and charges. There, there's so many things that we don't need. Uh, for instance, the diabetic patient that is on three different blood pressure medicines from three different doctors. That's an example. You know, mm -hmm. we did a lot of medication setups. We've done that. I've done a lot of that in the past. And it's interesting how even pharmacists miss that one doctor will prescribe one thing, one will prescribe another. And then the family's just like, I don't, you know, I don't know what, I don't know why my dad's blood pressure keeps dropping. Well, <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's look at it. So um, I know we've worked, Angela, we've worked with you over the years, many, many years. And um, you are so awesome at what you do. Um, Priscilla, I haven't had the opportunity to work with you yet. I, I hope to and look forward to. Um, but tell me some things that somebody is just at a loss. Um, the kids are fighting. There's six children. Three want aggressive care done for their dad. Three want hospice care. Um, on the opposite ends of the spectrum, you go in. Tell me, tell me an example, Angela, of how you would handle that. Well, of course, first is to listen to everybody. <laughs> and so uh, hear what the concerns are for each of the children and work with them to try to come to an agreement. Of course, if the person, the patient has an opinion, we absolutely want to honor that. And so one of the questions we would ask everybody is what has your dad or your mother said in the past about what their end of life wishes are? And sometimes we recognize that it takes families and individuals within the family a little time to process that and maybe even discuss it with the parent. But um, hopefully the family has, you know, uh, been involved with us longer so that we've had these discussions before it gets right to the end. And particularly if a person has a dementia or something like that, in the beginning, you want to ask the person, what are your wishes for the end of your life and how aggressive do you want the care to be? So, and our responsibility is to honor those wishes. Mm -hmm. So Priscilla, give me an example of how your service has helped someone just here in Dallas recently. Um, so we serve lots of different ranges of ages of clients and the difference really between Angela and I is that um, we serve patients, whether they're pediatrics or millennials. And um, oftentimes millennials get a bad rap, um, but I will say um, they just need somebody to back them up in terms of what are they trying to accomplish for their healthcare. So an instance um, that we've had recently is, you know, a child in grade school really needed a procedure done and insurance was denying. They weren't going to pay it because they were not on the right insurance plan. They were saying, nope. It's not, we're not going to pay for it. Good luck. If you want to get it done, um, it'll probably cost thousands and thousands of dollars. And um, we got the referral um, from that client because they had gone to the emergency room several times for that child. And that was very costly. Emergency room visits, paying a $350, $450, $650 mm -hmm. just copay, and they just kick you out the door now. The healthcare professionals, they're doing it right. They're doing everything they can, but we know there's a better way. So we, we knew what the client needed. We knew they needed to get the procedure done. So we drove the solution to say, hey, let's go shopping. Let's go shopping for what you need to get done. Let's get it done weeks earlier. Let's get it done with the right pediatric surgeon, making sure we have the right anesthesiologist costs and the right facility. So I will tell you alone, you will be shocked at the facility fees alone. Mm -hmm. $20,000 and you're just thinking, why, why was it that expensive? This is ridiculous. Well, we can negotiate on behalf of you, advocating for your need to make sure we're driving that healthcare, getting it done sooner, right? Mm -hmm. And that delay in care, that child didn't need to go back to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And the child's fine, family knows we're here for them. If another event comes up, we, we know that there's things that we can do. There should be no delay for what you need to get done. So, I mean, we're, 
we love it. It's exciting. We get phone calls and we're like, wow, we had no clue that we could actually ask the doctor this and get this done and go around insurance and get a cash price. And this is what people need to know about how transparent healthcare can get. If you're paying 14,000 in premiums for your employer plan, I'm telling you, you should use it to every single ability that you possibly can. Don't waste your money if it's going out of your paycheck every two weeks. Know how to work it, have an advocate, and let's drive it. Great. Yeah, and you know, talking about Angela, I know that I've talked to you on the phone. Um, you are all, you're like an ER. You're always open. Yeah. And <laughs> anyway, but I have talked to you when you're like, Joe, i got to go. I've got to go meet a patient at the ER right now. Yeah. And just in a conversation, you know, I know my son's doing his residency. And as a doctor, they only have X amount of time to to spend on each patient. And so say you go in, you meet a, a client at the ER and they go in with some kind of a symptom, but it's not addressing what's really going on. And so how do you help when you go on these visits at the ER. I know COVID is a little different right now, mm -hmm. but give an example of how your being there made a difference in one of your clients. Yes, so um, we, most of our clients, we do have long-term or at least half of them continue with us. So we've known the client for a year, two years, five years, sometimes 10 years. Maybe they get a urinary tract infection, which is very common in the elderly. They go to the ER, we're there to meet them. The doctor uh, talks about them having dementia. Maybe they don't have dementia or they feel as though their behavior is such that uh, they need to give them strong medications that really are contraindicated. Mm -hmm. So we're able to advocate. We're able to say, let's not do that. Um, normally this person is just fine at home, but they're sick right now. Um, also give the family a lot of peace of mind, particularly if they don't live in the area. That's a big part of our client base is the adult children live away. And um, right now, uh, this is not related to the ER, but we're working with a situation of a single woman, very intelligent, who has an early onset dementia. And her two sisters live out of state. And they called me a few weeks ago. And uh, this lady has never been able to get a clear diagnosis, even though she's gone to several doctors. So just this week, we gathered all the information from the previous visits. And we have um, coordinated care and we're getting her a diagnosis. And the sisters, of course, are very grateful. There's other issues to deal with. She um, suffers from hoarding disorder, which is made worse by the dementia she mm -hmm. has, whichever one it is. And uh, so we had to uh, contract with um, some uh, organizing groups to come in and an organizing uh, person to come in and help us with the the disorder in the house and those types of things. So, I mean, er every situation is different, which of course Priscilla can confirm each you need is unique. And we're there to meet the needs of the family, the client and the surrounding things. So one of the things I could say is when we do our assessment, we um, look at things like legal issues, of course the family support system, how much they're able to to be available for the person that's that's declining or having some issues. Also their financial situation, because we never wanna recommend services that they can't afford. Mm -hmm. And then we try also to see all benefits that they're available or that are available to them, such as the VA benefits. And if it's appropriate to be applying for Medicaid or through the attorney setting up their estate so that they can in the future, if need be, uh, be accessing Medicaid. So there's lots of interesting complexities, but um, no day, no two days are alike. And Priscilla can certainly attest to that, uh, as can the two of and you. And all of our lives, yeah, yeah every day, every so minute's it's, it's different. So it's not routine, right. but it's it's very gratifying. So let me ask you a question. And I get this a lot. Sometimes I'll call a doctor for a patient, and I'll get the, you know, I can't give that information out. This is a HIPAA violation. Um, and I've been to the doctor with patients where I'm checking them in. Uh, we, we can't, you can't go in the back room because we don't have, you know, we don't have clearing because you're, you know, we have no HIPAA clearance for you. So how do you go about that where you're the advocate? Do, how does that work if you are to take a patient to the doctor? Yeah. 
Well, most of the time the patient's able to give permission, but we also always at our assessment have them sign a HIPAA release. Mm -hmm. So, and it lists all my team members mm -hmm. so that if I'm not available, say if someone goes to the ER, then one of the other team can go in and then we have all their information in our company software and they can access it, their medications, their you know, emergency contact in terms of family members and things like that. So um, yeah, that's what we do. Those HIPAA forms are important. Some places don't want to recognize them, and then you just have the patient sign their form. Mm -hmm. and, uh, What's your name? Okay. Yeah. How do people go about finding a care manager, and what, what are some yeah. of the great questions to ask when they're interviewing care managers to decide who they want to hire? Sure. Well, uh, in terms of what I'm doing as an aging life care professional, myself and the other 1,799 members <laughs> um, of the Aging Life Care Association. So their website is www.aginglifecare.org. And then my company website is caringwithgrace.com. And um, they can go on there. They can find a care manager anywhere in the country. Um, mostly concentrated around the metropolitan areas. There are not as many in rural areas. But I will drive up to about an hour and a half to go do an assessment and develop a care plan for a family and then see the person maybe every three months. Of course, I can't provide emergency room uh, visits <laughs> when, you know, it's an hour and a half away. But um, we can do that and, and be um, an advocate for those patients as well. Great. So. Yeah, with okay. Grave Care, um, we do telehealth. Um, and we are mobile throughout all 50 states because we want to make sure people have access. Um, same situations happen in Texas as they do Florida, um, and they still need an advocate. So um, we really are at their, at their side um, along the process. Um, they can co contact us directly um, through um, calling 309-657-7314. Or you can just go to the website, uh, www.gravecare.com. There's a contact page. Um, the message comes right to us, and we respond uh, sometimes within the hour or usually at least by same day, depending on our uh, volume. Now, I'm sure at, at this point in the show, viewers are trying to figure out your names sound similar, Very but similar. they're not. <laughs> Do you want to go through that a little bit? I love your name. Your yeah, name. yeah, great, great care. Um, actually, my husband helped me um, with this name. Grave actually means to prepare, um, but the name really comes from my two daughters' name, Grace and Faith, and we put them together. And we really believe that preparing somebody, being proactive instead of a reactive uh, mm -hmm. care plan, is the best way to go into your health, um, whatever part of that life cycle is at. Um, and that's where Grace came. But then Grace, Grace, when I heard your name, I was like, oh, my gosh, we have something in common. We do. And that is that our husbands named our companies. <laughs> <laughs> so my, uh, my journey as a, a geriatric care manager and aging life care professional began as a family caregiver. And my husband's great aunt Grace lived with us. And when she came in, to, when she moved in with us about 19 years ago, within about six weeks, we realized something was really wrong. And so uh, began our journey of getting a diagnosis, which turned out to be Alzheimer's. And she lived with us for a year. And then through a series of circumstances, she did move to an assisted living. And um, about, and then I went back to work as a nurse because I was home that first uh, year that she was with us. And um, uh, I guess, let's see, that was 2001. Then in 2006, I began my company Grace was being cared for at the assisted living and eventually the memory care and then uh, at the end, a nursing home. And uh, I met a care manager through a family support group. And so that began my journey. This care manager locally here in Dallas um, mentored me for two years while I still worked at the hospital. And then in August of 2006, I started my company. And I always told my husband, it has to have Grace's name in it. So he was throwing out a bunch of names as a marketing guy, very creative. And uh, when he said caring with grace, I said, wait, say it again, say it again. 
And that's how we got our name. It's <clears> remarkable <throat> to, to be in this industry and to hear stories like that. And you hear, I mean, look at the four of us. Yeah. What brings you to this industry? And uh, mm. inevitably, it's family. It, yeah. It's, it it's always an experience. comes back to a personal family. experience. That's yes. great. Mm, I love absolutely. that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, when I was a little girl, my grandmother would take my brother and sister and I to nursing homes. And um, so we saw the least of these, mm -hmm. you know, as mm -hmm. young children. And my grandmother always said, always be grateful for what you have because mm -hmm. you never know, you know, what the future will hold and mm -hmm. don't ever take any day for granted. And she was, it was so true. And um, thank you guys so much. You, you do a great job. Um, if they need to reach you, if you want to reach Priscilla or Angela, um, if you want to reach Brian, Brian's with Manchester Living, um, Cambridge Caregivers, they do an awesome job as well. So um, just reach out. Um, we can help you too with any direction to get emails, et cetera. So thank you so much. It's been You're great. Welcome. You're welcome. Good show. We're glad to be here. Yes, this is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.